What is up everybody? Welcome back to the 2019 Elite Brothers Open at Pendery Golf Course in Rosiata, New Mexico. Uh, my name is Gabriel Dow and I'm here with Bobby Cox. How's it going everyone? Uh, so far it looks like we got Dylan Valance and Sean Sullivan shooting the hot rounds with uh, five under par. We've got Tyler Liebman two back at three under. Eric Coca um, is uh, going to be three back at two under. And then we got Jonathan Tapia at one under par. Yeah. So. Um, once again, this course is absolutely beautiful. Um, getting straight into it, hole one, par four. This is a 793 foot hole. Um, the pond carries about, I'd say, 290, 300 um, across there. You really just want to throw a distance driver, try and get as far up this hill as you can to give yourself a uh, um, just the best look possible for your three. Yeah, you're really just trying to clear that pond. Uh, make sure you don't go left in those woods, as we saw Cody do that first round and mm -hmm. it did not end up very well so nope. staying on the right side is way more open and Absolutely. a little bit easier on an approach shot yep here we got Dylan Valance he's got plenty of power to get up that hill oh yeah yeah this is one of those holes where you really just want to break it into find a landing zone and then just play it from there yep and that he has found the OB there it looks like it just hit the hill, turned over, and uh, hit it at the wrong angle, and it just bounced it straight into the water. Yeah. Here we got Sean Sullivan. And you're gonna see that hat flying off that head a lot this <laughs> yeah. round, just so everyone knows. That's awesome. That's like me, every time I wear a hat, yeah. it just flies off. But he crushed it out there. Yeah, he uh, clears the OB Creek there, and he's gonna be uh, just barely past it. Here we got Tyler. Who has insane distance as well. And that one just got away from and turned over. And uh, he's actually ended up safe. He's going to be on the right side, that kind of little mini island there. Yeah, as you can tell, this, win this wind is just ripping. Yeah. Right in their is. faces. And uh, Eric just leaving that one a little bit short. And he's going to have to play from the drop zone along with Dylan. Now this is getting high. That looks really nice. Yeah. Looks like he took something a little bit more understable and just played that left side and trusted that turnover. Yeah, a little risky, but with that headwind, I mean, you can get a little bit of turn out of it for sure. Yeah. This is Dylan from the drop zone. He's just trying to crush one out there. And that'll leave him with a um, pretty easy upshot. Yeah, about I don't know, 180, 200. And Eric with a kind of a shank job here. I don't think he meant to go that right. Yeah, he pulled that one way right. He's gonna he's gonna be left with a pretty long upshot, and might have to opt for the forehand as well because yep. uh, there's those trees lining that right side. Tyler putting out a good rip there. Yeah. Still pretty well short. And yeah, again that this second shot here really plays just super long. It's weird on uh, on Sean's like throws. It kind of looks like he's throwing at Annie every time, but the disc like comes out flat somehow. Yeah, yeah, he just snaps it, drops his shoulder. Yeah. Sean trying to throw that flex forehand, not quite getting the height on it. Yeah, he'll most likely just be laying up, taking a four. And a par is not really a bad score on this hole. Lots of OBs. Yeah. You got the water initially. It's it's a tough first hole. Man, I really wish this course was like permanent. Right. Although it probably wouldn't be in this nice of shape if it was. Yeah. And Dylan laying one up there. He'll be able to tap in the four from there. Sean, kind of a shank up job coming up quite a bit short. Yeah, just leaving that way short. And Tyler laying up for the par. Sean's going to be tapping in a bogey from there. Yeah, hopefully we won't see quite as many rollaways as we did round one. That was no. that was pretty insane, actually. Yeah. It seems like I mean, every when you're other mountain golf, it, it's bound to happen. Yeah. And John with the par. Nothing to complain about on the first hole. No. And 
tablet with the power as well. And we were parked next to Eric Coca all all weekend, and yeah. he is a fun dude. Yeah, he has yeah. positive vibes all the time. He's um, actually a PE teacher in Albuquerque. Yeah, so. and his is is his girlfriend or his wife? Um, I think it's his girlfriend. She uh, she's also a teacher the there. She's cool. Yeah, little power couple going on. Yeah. I can see Eric making a pretty sweet PE teacher. Yeah, playing some dodgeball. You know, I feel like he doesn't get anybody in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, pole two, this is a par three, 528 feet. This is just a downhill bomb. Um, there is um, the OB right behind the basket, so you do have to be wary of going long. But uh, most of these guys are gonna be playing that sweeping hyzer that uh, just kind of carries that right side and um, literally just flies all the way down there. And uh, you want something to just carry as left as possible. But we got Tyler here throwing a little turnover. Yeah, coming up a little bit short, but that's definitely in his parting range. Yeah. This is John after the par. This is looking way safe. Yeah, and we saw a couple guys play on that left side first round as well. Yeah, it's surprising enough to see him play that more kind of flat more hyzer. Yeah. Right in that right side. Dylan's turned it over a little bit too much and he's caught that tree on the uh, right. He'll have about 150 foot upshot from there. Eric, this is flexing looking. one out there. Might need to slow down. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's um, not quite pin high, but he'll be left with about 60, 70 feet from there. And Sean playing that right side. Ties are in back nicely, and um, he's going to be a little bit further than uh, Eric there, but still a long putt. Dylan just throwing a nice approach there. Yeah, th this hole I feel like is kind of getting close to a musket just because it's so downhill i feel like it's very reachable yeah for these guys for, it's for these guys yeah yeah one of the one of the muskets holes on this, hole, and, on this course and it's, and it's one of the more open holes too mm -hmm. eric trying to get it in there but uh both of them just leaving it a little bit short Something with John that I noticed is he's always, he's just got like laser focus when he puts. Yes. He just gets up there, he's got his routine, and um, I was actually talking to Eric, and he was like, he said that uh, John's like his putting coach, and he said, Really? He said his like advice is just throw it in the basket, man. Just look at the basket and throw it in there. <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. <laughs> I mean, it's simple advice, but that's it, that's it what helps so much. Exactly. People overthink their putts all the time. Yeah. Including me, and it, it, it just put you in a rut really yeah and like that's what you see ams doing is like they'll miss 10 to 15 foot putts and like i mean when you're that short it's so easy you're just like just get it in the basket yeah and like also overcorrecting is a big problem that people try to do oh yeah Overcomplicate things yep yeah it's never fun to miss a 10 to 15 footer oh, you God. just feel like the worst and it happens way too often yeah <laughs> Um, hole three, this is a par three, 272 feet. Arguably one of the more difficult holes on this course. Even though it's so short, you have the pond that's right in front of the basket, and the basket's on a mound um, with a hill rolling down towards OB behind it, so. Yeah, if it's um, not the most difficult, it's most certainly the most dangerous. Oh yeah. Tyler's throwing one way up high. And it looks like he hit the hill and bounced back into the pond. So he's going to be forced to uh, take a shot from the drop zone, which is on the right there. Oh, was that off the power line? Yeah, he hit the power line. Did he stay safe? I, I know he hit over there, but I, I'm pretty sure it was recall. safe. We'll I'm pretty see. sure it was safe. Dylan put him out in a nice shot. That's going to be a really scary putt, though. Yeah, it's just so hard to stick this green. It's almost impossible. Really, the only way is to hit that the hillside right in front with like a mid range or something. Yeah, and even still, that's risky because you can take that like backboard bounce. All kinds of things water, can happen. So, yeah, I mean, it's just such a dangerous hole. 
got Sean just kind of going right at it. it. Looks like it's dropping pretty nice. Oh, and see, it yeah. hit that hillside and Arch it checked out. up. Yep. Yeah, and here's Tyler from that drop zone. He did go in the water. And he skipped a little bit past there, and that's going to be a scary save for uh, four. It looks like John also hit, found the water. Both throwing almost an exact upshot. And I mean, they both were looking pretty solid. They're still about 20, 25 feet away. Eric trying to give it a run, but... Oh, no. Oh, oh no. And that is the worst. He'll be putting there from a for a four. Yeah. And it's never fun to follow up a putt like that. No. Ex especially from, like, the a, a similar spot. Right. And here is Tyler to save his three. Save his or four. Or save his four. Yep. My bad. Yeah, into a headwind, uphill. This is just set up for disaster. <laughs> I think it's starting to rain too. This yeah, time. this this round was kind of weird because the rain. It was like uh, when we were doing the drone footage, it just like kind of would rain for On fifteen and minutes and then stop. Yeah, luckily it never came down like too hard, and it also wasn't that. Well, it got a little bit chilly. Yeah, but only for yeah. like you know twenty minutes. Yeah, not too bad. John tapping in an unfortunate double bogey. Along with Tyler. Here we got Dylan tapping in the four. With force. <laughs> are, you, are you surprised? <laughs> Not surprised at all. And Sean taking in a nice birdie. Yeah. All right, hole four. This is a par three. 393 feet. Carries way uphill. Plays more like about 430. Um, there is an OB green on the left side here that you want to avoid. You can kind of play the back side of it um, for a skip, which uh, most of these guys will be taking if you're comfortable with the forehand. Dylan, we saw throw a backhand and got pretty close last round, so uh, yeah, that's, big that's turnover also a pretty, pretty viable route. Yeah. And this started off on a really good angle, but it just... Got stable real quick and yeah, it's found the OB. He, I think he got a little wind push okay. down and uh, just kind of skidded on the green. It's going to be OB there. Eric, that is not turning enough for him, but clears the green and it's going to be left with about 70 feet. Yeah, this is one of the more difficult twos out here. Yeah. Just because you got to, it, it plays so much farther than, than it says. Yeah. You got a low ceiling, got an OB that you got across. A lot mm -hmm. of danger. And Dylan opting for the forehand there, which is weird because he got inside the circle with the uh, backhand last round. So maybe there was a weird wind going on. And John just kind of shanked that one a little bit. Roller? All right. Needs to hook up. Yeah, it's going to be on the left side. Yeah, he's going to be right there next to Eric. So far, the best looks of the bunch, though. And John throwing out a, a little flex forehand. He's going to be behind the tree on that right side, so hopefully he has a look there. That flagpole is kind of in the way. Great upshot there by Dylan. Yeah, he'll be able to tap in the three easily there. Sean's going to be uh, right there in the tree. Might be forced with a little straddle, but it's only about 15 feet. Yeah, and again, that, that flagpole might be in the way of his butt. It's kind of weird. You have, like, random stuff in the way of this basket. You I know. Got, you got, like, a sign, got, a flagpole. Yeah, flag, yeah, real estate agent <laughs> trying to sell houses up here. Trying to sell that green. No? Yeah. <laughs> John going a little bit high. He'll be tapping in for four. And a good bogey save from Sean there. It's kind of in an awkward position. And John taking, was that it? Yeah, he went OB off the drive, remember? He didn't oh. cross the path. That's right. Yeah. 
Yeah, that low ceiling can get you. Oh, yeah. And Especially then, when you're trying to drive it uphill. Yeah. Makes it way harder. Right. That's where growing up in Colorado or Montana or wherever there's mountains. Comes in handy. Kinda, yeah. Yeah. Because you know how to throw the angles right on those uphills and downhills. Yeah, Tyler tapping in the par. All right, hole five. This is a par three, 645 feet. It is um, another downhill, super downhill hole, actually. The first 300 feet of it is like, just drops probably 60, 70 feet. Yeah. And um, most of these guys are gonna be playing the uh, right side hyzer, just trying to hang out right. Not too much because there is a line of trees there, but as long as you get a good amount of hyzer on it, um, you'll most likely have a look. You really just want to be careful of it flipping up and carrying OB. Yeah, really just throwing a death straight shot with a overstable disc and getting like the natural fade at the end is really going to be like the ideal flight. Yeah. Because you can't come up quite a bit short if you just go straight hyzer unless you have, you know, crazy power, which some of these guys do. Yeah. Eric Dylan. throwing has a little bit too low, but gets a nice skip and uh, he'll have a pretty long look for his two. Dylan's gonna be on the other side of that hill there. Yeah, and Dylan came up about only like 15 feet short uh, first round. Yeah, it was a crush. And we saw Jason throw a forehand roller down the hill, which was, yeah. I couldn't believe that happened. I mean, that's a safe play. It'll turn over and stay in bounds. Right. That's a great shot from Tyler there. He's only gonna be about 25 feet. Sean trying to flex one out there. It looks like it's fading out a little bit too soon, and he's going to be pretty short there. He'll be laying up for three. There's definitely no use in running this basket because yeah. this, I mean, we said it last round, but it's on a mound. and It's the most dangerous part OB. of this hole. Yeah. And that. And yeah. <laughs> John going OB there. Got some good distance on it. He'll have an easy upshot to save four. Um, and maybe even a three look. Okay, Eric's like forehand upshot looks so crazy because he's like way out in front, but it is like on point. Yeah, no, he's he's very accurate with it. Yeah. And John, kind of giving that a half go. You think Dylan's going for this? No. Yeah. Yep. No. With his style of putt, I mean, no. you just can't. You can't. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you're like a Paul that can like really control his uh, his power and not go mm -hmm. flying past the basket, then. Yeah, that kind of putt just requires like spin control. You got to be able to like slow it down and just have the putt float to the basket. And as you can see without... here, it is just so windy. Eric does not want to putt. Right. <laughs> He's like, anybody else want to go? But he saves three anyways. Here's Sean for his par. I'm going to keep him at three under. Gonna be Dylan tapping in for par as well. That'll keep him at three under as well. And Jonathan tapping in an unfortunate bogey there. Yeah, that OB can get sneaky. Yeah, just you, know you really can't afford to take almost any turn in your disc. Hole six, this is a par three, 327 feet. There is this tiny gap on the left side, which nobody will be taking <laughs> no. um, because there is a wide open sky spike hyzer line on the right side. So the, you continue. I was going to say the only thing kind of sketchy about that big hyzer is like there's like a branch kind of like right in front of the tee box that you have to miss, but it, it's pretty missable. Yeah, there is, there's a lot of branches on that right side. There's a couple windows in that bunch of trees, but um, I mean, you're really just kind of hoping you have one of those windows yeah. on that right side. It's definitely the safest play because trying to go up that middle gap, you can end up way short and have just like a jail up shot. So oh, yeah. um, the hyzer line's definitely ideal. Oh, and Tyler, massive slip there. That yeah, was this actually is, really sketchy looking. This is where it started raining pretty hard actually. Yeah. This is probably the time where it rained, rained the hardest during the round. All I know is that my camera was under my shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Sean. A decent shot there. Yeah, he's going to be in that jail area. Yeah. 
But we saw Dylan have a open lane, so they're down there. Yeah. Chon throwing a big Annie. And it works out perfect. <laughs> Just a... That was nice. I actually love throwing those shots. Yeah. What? Oh. And Eric with a nice forehand putt. We there. were just talking about his his uh his forehand game from up close. And yeah, that was that, that was circle's edge, maybe outside the circle. <laughs> yeah, that was that really was nice. Real nice. It's cool to get that on film. Yeah, that'll move him to two under par. Dylan with not quite the window that he had first round. And yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many just tree trunks, limbs, everything in the way. Good recovery though, makes yeah. it makes the par. Yeah. And Tyler with a good par save. John as well. And Sean. Hole seven, this is a par four, 605 feet. This one carries way uphill. Um, probably plays closer to 675-ish, I'd say. Um, you're really just trying to throw a bomb, not take too much turn because the OB cart path does come into play on that right side. So um, you're really just trying to get as far up this hill as you can to leave yourself with a easy upshot. Um, this green does play out of bounds, um, along with every other green, so yeah. Yeah, the key spot is kind of just being in between those uh, yellow ropes on the right side and the green. If you can get in between there, you'll have a pretty easy upshot. Yeah. And it's this is kind of the danger area with those trees might be getting in his way. Yeah. Still a decent sized gap over there, so hopefully we can see him get up and down from there. Good rip there by Dylan. Yeah, so you can see one hole later and it's beautiful outside. Right. <laughs> nice and sunny. No rain in sight. And then here in a couple holes you'll see <laughs> more rain right back at it. Yeah, we're used to it in Oklahoma though. Oh no. Yeah, that he just lost like 80 feet from that roll. Wow. <laughs> just hit that tree at the perfect angle and bounced it right back. Yeah, it's not going to hurt him too much, but... Yeah, he'll still have a pretty easy upshot from there. Might have actually put him in a better position. Yeah. Sean putting right out in the middle of the fairway. Here is John. This is turning over. Hopefully not too much. Oh, nice, nope. good. Yeah, he's right next to those yellow ropes on that right side. That's an ideal spot. This is looking good from Tyler. Oh yeah. Puts it right under the basket. And Sean, this is looking nice as well. Needs to slow down a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's fine. It's gonna be kind of a scary comebacker. Yeah, with the green right behind there. Eric, oh no. Hit that little hill right in front of the green and slowed it down. Yep, and he's gonna be OB there. He'll just be laying up for the five. Yeah, this green actually is kind of hard to attack because you're trying to clear the green, get enough power on it, but if you clear that hill at all, I mean, it's going to go at least 30 deep. Yeah, and there's a bunch of just twigs, and it's it's jail back there behind the basket, as you can see. Yeah, I think kind of playing the skip shot like on the green is probably your best bet. Because, I mean, you're going to get skips off greens. Yeah. Sean with a really nice birdie there. I'm going to move him to four under par. And John with a nice birdie as well. I mean, he's just so solid with the putter. Yeah. Dylan slamming one in there. That'll move him to four under par as well. Got a little Dylan Sean battle going on yeah. right here with. And Eric's Eric creeping Kobe in there creeping, too. Yeah. Tyler with a nice birdie. Yeah, he's trying to hop into the fun as well. Eric definitely not happy with the bogey here. No. But still a lot of golf left, so should be able to make up some ground. And um, once again, the drone footage on uh, hole eight, we kind of had to stagger um, 
when we were doing drone footage because of the rain. Just yeah, just on and off, on, on and off. off. So um, we ended up missing hole eight here. So we're sorry about that. Yeah, this hole, um, it's 1,218 feet. It kind of plays right initially and then carries straight and then comes back left. Um, so ideally you're wanting to get something out straight. Um, as long as you stay in bounds off the tee shot, you'll be, you'll be okay. Yeah, being on that left side where uh, Tyler ended up, it makes the angle way easier, but you're also a little bit farther back. Yeah. And if you play on the right side of this little uh, landing zone, uh, there's like some like hills and it can kind of mess, mess you up as well. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if we had some like super big arms on this card, the, those guys would be throwing a huge turnover here. Yeah. Um, but these guys aren't Eagle McMahon or Simon Lazat, so. Yeah. This is pushing that OB, but it's going to stay in. That's actually a really good spot. Yeah. It's a little bit shorter than I thought. Eric opting for the forehand. And as long as it clears that, yeah. He's out in the open there, and... Um, We'll have a good second shot set up there. Yeah, and Sean ended up in a really tricky spot, having to go with the big Annie. Or maybe, he was maybe trying roller. the sky roller. Yeah, something. I think he just hit that tree. Looked like it was coming down on a good angle. Yeah. And this was a crush. Was mashed. Yeah, that's getting that's, it up to these trees is, from where he was at is just insane. Yeah, and from there he's gonna have a pretty easier hyzer upshot. Oh yeah. Like that's that had to have been at least 500 feet. Yeah. And John is going to be in a tricky spot there. Yeah, you want to be on the right side of those trees, kind of in front of that OB green to make your upshot way more open. Mm hmm. Because from there, I mean, you have scattered trees all in front of you. Yeah. With that OB sidewalk, in case you hit a tree, you can easily kick OB. So right. you want to be on the right side for sure. Yeah, Eric ended up right there next to John. They're both going to have some fun up shots from there. And Dylan just got this way too high, it looked like. Yeah, and Dylan's going to be right there next to those guys. Here's Sean's third. Pumping out a big hyzer. And he's going to be with the pack. Yeah. Hanging out over by the tree. You can't quite see the basket from here, but it's way to the left. Behind that bunch of trees. And that is going to be um, pretty short. Yeah, way gonna short. Be, wow. Going to be left with about 50, 60 feet from there. This is Eric. He threw that really low, and uh, he's going to be pretty short as well. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised to see a standstill there. Yeah. Hey. Maybe something was going whatever, on that we don't know. Whatever fits your style. Yeah. Yeah, John just threw that a little bit too high. <laughs> I mean, that reminded me of uh, of James Conrad. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. I, I love his just form. Just, <laughs> just so much motion after the throw. I love his form, though. I do too. I mean, it's it's not not uh, conventional, conventional. Yeah, but he's tied for the lead. Yeah. And as you can see, Tyler just left with the easiest upshot. This is John. Yeah, I'll be able to save par from there. Trying to drain Eric, another one. Giving, yeah. Getting greedy. Cameras are rolling. <laughs> yeah. He is running those forehand up shots. I don't blame him. Yeah, I don't either. And Dylan, a really good run, but just coming up a little bit short. Sean with a super quick putt there. Yeah. Saving the par. Maybe taking some advice from John. Just don't think. Just throw it. Just get it in the basket, man. Although it seems like John takes the longest. It seems like he's thinking the most about his shots, but well, maybe he's just got a blank that. mind. Yeah, he's just focused in. Oh, yeah. He's got to focus in on that one link. Yeah, I feel like that's some advice I give to people, and I don't even do it, really. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just focus on the link, man. And then you're putting and you're like, have this wide view of the basket and you're just like... <laughs> you're putting at three baskets. Where do I throw it? Yeah. Eric with a good par save. Five's not a bad score there. Super long hole, so... Yeah. 
nothing to complain about. Um, hole 9, this is a par 30, 483 feet. This is another hole that carries very far downhill. Um, you really can throw a mid-range on this shot. Um, as long as you keep something straight, something that doesn't hyzer out too much because there is the OB car path that plays on that left side. So um, just throw something out on the right side, have it carry down the hill, and uh, you'll most likely be uh, within at least 50 feet. So. Yeah, if you have the power, I definitely recommend the mid-range play, just so you don't have as much ground action towards that OB. And this hole has like one of the best views from the tee box. Oh yeah. It's hard to not say that about almost I all know. of them. <laughs> Tyler is going to be almost pin high right there. He'll be about 50 feet, 60 feet for his two. But that's a really nice shot from Dylan. A little bit short, he'll, um, I, I want to say that's about circle's edge. Sean, not quite getting the finish he wanted on that flight. No. Nope. Just kept on leaking right. Yeah. And he'll be laying up for three from there. John, he's worried. a little bit sawed off, and that's yeah. going straight out of bounds. He knew it right out of his hands. Yeah, he'll be trying to run three, but most likely taking a four at, at best. Yeah, the OBs are just eating him alive this round. It's really the only thing that's setting him back. Mm -hmm. Eric with a really nice shot there. He'll be about circle's edge from there. Sean going a little bit deep on his upshot, but should be able to save par. Ooh, oh, flashing it. Tyler with a safe, safe run there. Oh, oh. and Dylan just barely spitting out there. Good effort though. Good, Eric. Eric though, creeping up a stroke there. Stroke on the card. That'll put him at two under par. Him and Tyler are tied now. I didn't realize that Tyler had made such a move. Yeah. Wow. A lot closer race than I thought. Yeah, I mean, John's putting's there. It's just he's having troubles off the tee. Yeah. Hopefully he can stay out of the OBs on the back 11. Tyler tapping in par as well as Dylan. Unfortunately. Okay, hole 10. This is a par 3, 250 feet. Um, this is one of the easier holes on the course. The basket's tucked behind these trees on this hill. Um, most of these guys are going to be playing either a forehand over this left side gap or a uh, backhand hyzer on this right side gap. Um, you really just want you kind of want the nose up a little bit, but you want to throw it low as well with that nose up so that you can take kind of a skip towards the basket. Yeah, and Eric's going for the all air and it works out pretty fine. Yeah, he's only going to be about six feet. Tyler putting out a nice shot. I think that ended up at the bottom of the hill there. It might have looked like hit that tree there and Dylan going with the forehand this round yeah works out much better than the last round I actually like sure. that yeah I think I like that route more actually it, it seems a little bit more open mm -hmm. I feel like it's easier to like get your nose up on a forehand too oh for sure and Sean with a good shot as well he'll be able to tap in for birdie John's playing that higher Heiser route that Eric took and it's gonna be well short there kind of a scary putt because if you hit metal and catch edge you're rolling about 60 feet down the hill at least yeah at least that is such a steep hill Tyler with a nice putt yeah really nice putt from Tyler that'll move him to three under par Yeah, and Tyler's from uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, so he knows about these hills. Oh, yeah. He knows how to play them. Yep. Sean with a good birdie. 
Eric will follow suit, and I'm sure here in a second we will see Dylan just reach in and drop that in there. No, he's gonna laser it he's in got there. The, he's got the CTP. He does. Yeah. That was one of the. That's, that might have been the first putt that he didn't laser into the basket. Right. All right, that is gonna conclude the front ten of the 2019 Elite Brothers Open. Um, Dylan Balance and Sean Sullivan still holding that lead. They are both sitting at five under par. So. It's almost as if they've parred everything. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> that's the, exactly the score they started with. Uh, Tyler Liebman sitting at three under par along with Eric Coca. Uh, Jonathan Tapia is sitting at four big. So hopefully we can see him take a little bit less OBs and uh, keep that putter rolling on this back 11. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe. You can check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And we'll see you guys for the back 11. See you on the back 11.